Until recently, it had been over a year since the last official firmware release for the Radiolity GD88, and I thought they'd given up and abandoned the radio. But then in May, they surprised me by releasing a new update that fixed a few issues, most notably the received audio level being too high. And then in June, they released a new firmware update that has AES encryption. Now this was exciting. I rushed to download it and try it out because AES has for a long time been a feature that most commercial radios would charge you quite a lot extra to enable. So I painstakingly programmed in a new 256-bit AES key. I have no idea why they couldn't let me just paste in the key, like every other software does. I can only imagine the software engineers were having some kind of competition to see who could come up with the most frustrating and difficult user interface. So I sat there typing in each of the 64 bytes individually until finally it was ready to try out. Then I turned on my Motorola radio, programmed with the same key, and it just worked. Let me show you that now. So this so is talking from, from the Motorola, Motorola to the Radiolity with AS encryption. encryption. And this is talking, talking from the radio back, back to the Metro with AS, AS encryption. So it can talk to my Motorola DMR radio with full AS 256-bit encryption, and it didn't cost me a penny extra. Isn't that fantastic? But hold on a second. Crypto is only secure if the implementation is done well. So I thought, I wonder if they set this thing up right. I opened up DSD+, Plus, which shows the initialization vector, or MI as DSD+, Plus calls it. This thing is very important for making your AES work securely, and it should be a random value each time you transmit. So I looked at the first IV, and it looks good so far. It seems to be a random value, not something like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But then I transmitted again, and looked at the second IV, and it's exactly the same. It turns out the radio always uses the same number, which means that the AES encryption on this radio is completely broken and insecure. If you want to learn more about why this is, you can look up a reused key attack. But the key piece of information is that it's not secure. You really can't rely on this at all for secure communication it's significantly less secure than even Motorola's enhanced privacy, which is only 40 bits and relies on the ancient RC4 algorithm, which is known to have flaws and has been deprecated in most other applications. I wanted to be positive about this radio because they're obviously trying to bring us something cool with interesting features like the single frequency repeater and AES encryption, but unfortunately I'm left disappointed again. Much like the single frequency repeater, the AES has been implemented so poorly that it's not worth using. It's such a shame they went to all this effort to add AES, but then neglected this small but vital detail. I hope they'll fix this major security flaw, and I'll add an update to the video description if they do. My advice to whoever is writing the firmware, if you're watching this, is that you should really focus on quality a bit more. There's absolutely no point in having all these cool extra features if they don't work well enough to be worth using. Why are you spending time adding new things like AES when the features the radio was released with are still not working perfectly? For all my subscribers watching the video, Thanks for watching as usual and see you in the next video.